What is going on deck builders? Welcome back to another episode of Super Budget Commander. Today I've got a very special episode in store for you guys. My good friend MTG Sickly is joining us. We both are huge Sidri fans and I was so stoked when she agreed to help me breathe a little life into the Galvanic Genius. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Now let's get started. Pagliano, a city rife with corruption. If you have any hope of surviving, you will need a quick wit and a sharp blade. I've spent years poring over ancient tomes, sharpening my mind with lessons from the artificers of old. Over time, I gained the ability to imbue inanimate objects with life. Imagine, empty suits of armor fighting battles. Will I be swept up in the tide of corruption, or will I act as a catalyst for change? Sidri, Galvanic Genius, is a 3-mana, 2-2 human artificer in Esper colors. For only 1 blue mana, Sidri can turn any non-creature artifact into an artifact creature with a power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. For only 1 white and 1 black, you can take things a step further and give any artifact creature death touch and lifelink until the end of the turn. Today, I'll be showcasing how you can get the most out of Sidri on a $50 budget. Any commander who can turn mana rocks into death touch life linking creatures should probably have quite a few of them lying around. Having the dual threat of being able to ramp in a hurry, but also utilize cards like Dark Steel Ingot as indestructible threats is really nice. We've also got a handy mana dork at our disposal in the form of Vidalkin Engineer and cost reducers with Foundry Inspector and Ethereum Sculptor. We can also gain serious value out of cards like Mycosynth Wellspring and Traveler's Amulet that not only make for great chump blockers, they're also great at fixing our mana. If you really want to irritate people, give Staff of Nin Death Touch. For a simple tap, you can take out pretty much any creature. The Spell Bomb set us up with nice surprise removal or card draw if need be. Skull Clamp just got even more annoying. Now you can use Sidri to animate your one drop artifacts and Skull Clamp them to draw two cards. Artificer's Assistant and Riddlesmith have tagged along to help us sculpt our hand just the way we like it. And Padim helps us maintain card advantage, makes our artifacts hexproof, and says arrogant things like, Impress me. Well, sucks to be you, Padim. I don't have time to sit around and impress you. I need to spend more time drawing cards. Mystic Remora, Brainstorm, and Windfall are going to help keep our hand full of artifact goodness. Even Night's Whisper, Read the Bones, and Underworld Connections have jumped in to help out. We're going to need plenty of cards in our hand if we plan on doing more than just animating an artifact every once in a while. Sidri's also enlisted the help of Trinket, Trophy, and Treasure Mage to ensure that she gets the artifacts she wants when she wants them. No way, the blue deck plays counter spells, whoever would have guessed. I'm also a big fan of these metalcraft and improvised spells. We have plenty of artifacts and we'll always get value out of these. It's important to have a variety of removal, that way we can take on anything we come up against. Executioner and Dispeller's Capsule pull double duty. They can be death touch life linking blockers or become trap removal for our opponents. Caltrops is hilarious. Animate this and give it death touch and lifelink and your opponents will never be able to attack you again. Every deck needs a bailout card. Sidri's are Steel Hellkite and Merciless Eviction. Artifact removal is everywhere in Commander. It's so important that we have creatures like Junk Diver or spells like Argivian Find to get back our precious trinkets. Shroom the Hegemon is pure value here as well. We can use our cost reducers to get her onto the battlefield for 4 or 5 mana, plus Sidri can give her death touch and lifelink. That's nothing to scoff at. We have close to 40 artifacts in this deck. You can spend all day animating Signets, or you can step up to the big leagues and animate an Aetherflux Reservoir. Animate old Aether Boy here, give him Death Touch and Life Link, and the 50 damage you deal to an opponent, you'll regain as life. Brutal. Do you like Thopters? Of course you do. Sharding Sphinx is here to help us make all of the Thopters. 
And who needs Sidri to animate our artifacts when we can use March of the Machines or the Antiquities War to turn all of our little artifacts into a raging robot death army? Our first combo involves Salvaging Station, Seat of the Synod, Sidri, and Disciple of the Volt. We're going to tap Seat of the Synod for a blue and use that mana to turn it into a creature with Sidri. Seat of the Synod will be a zero toughness creature, meaning it will die. We can then use Salvaging Station to return Seat of the Synod to the battlefield, which will untap the Salvaging Station. This creates a nifty little loop where you can infinitely reanimate Seat of the Synod and ping each opponent to death one damage at a time. You know what's better than one Thopter? One billion Thopters. Using Thopter Foundry, you can sacrifice Sword of the Meek, which will create a 1 1 Thopter token. Sword of the Meek will then return itself from the graveyard attached to that newly created token. And you can do this again and again and again as long as you have one mana to pay for it. Right now, this deck is full of a bunch of lands that enter the battlefield tapped. It's the problems you face when you're building a deck on a budget. However, if you upgrade these lands to ones that enter the battlefield untapped and get you whatever colors you need, the deck will be much faster and more consistent. There's also a lot of basic lands here. It would be good to minimize these as much as possible and instead include cards like Ancient Tomb, Inventor's Fair, or Academy Ruins that are pure value in an artifact heavy deck. And because we're ballin' on a budget, we have a lot of cheapo artifacts that enter the battlefield tapped or are just slow, but those are rookie numbers. We want to pump those numbers up and get artifacts like Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, or Grim Monolith and really get out of the gates fast. Now don't get me wrong, I love me some Crystal Ball or Traveler's Amulet, but if you really want to take this deck to the next level, you're going to want artifacts like Gilded Lotus, Sensei's Divining Top, or Basalt Monolith. I won't lie, we do have some solid creatures on our side, however, why settle for solid when instead you can have the awesomeness that is Metalworker, Master Transmuter, or Aether Sworn Canonist. Tutor spells and combo pieces go together like Sunny and Cher. Cut out a bunch of these janky spell bomb artifacts and replace them with significant upgrades like Enlightened, Vampiric, or Demonic Tutor. Next time on Super Budget Commander. I'd like to give a massive shout out to MTG Sickly. Thank you so much for coming on and narrating the part of Sidri. You guys definitely need to check out her channel. There is a link to that in the description below. If you want to see more collaborations in the future, smash that like button. And you know what's up. Stay classy deck builders. I'll see you next time.